at 6 a.m. In the port of Marseille, a giant of glass and steel enters the stage. At 60 meters high and 330 meters long, one of the largest European vessels prepares to set sail. MSC Splendida, you have permission to dock at port 180. Wind is north-northeast, four knots. In the port control tower, officers guide the delicate maneuver. Security level number one, the wind uh, northeast, uh, five knots. There is very little distance from the quay. Look, there's hardly 10 meters. At only 37 years old, Antonio Castellano is manager of this liner. At over 450,000 square meters, the MSC Splendida is a gigantic floating palace. I think it's very difficult all over the world to find uh, a such big structure like this. Probably not even in Las Vegas you will be able to find such a big hotel with so many rooms. In order to clean the 20 meter high bay windows, he's even recruited a team of professional climbers. Everything has to be perfect. The passengers board in one hour. In Paris, on the eve of departure, Claude and Marie France just finished packing their bags. Did you take your bathing suit? Yes. One thing I can't forget is my belt. Ah, oh, your pants won't sag too much. Yeah, but still. The retired couple is preparing for their cruise on the MSC Splendida. They could never have signed themselves up for this on their modest pensions. It's a surprise gift from their children for their 50th wedding anniversary. From the moment she knew what was going on, like two in the morning, she started trying on her bathing suit. Right, it's very important for us. Marie France has been dreaming of going on a cruise for years. I never thought I would go on a cruise. I often see ads for them and I always rip them in half because I know they're not for me. And now I get to go, so it's great. It's a great present from Santa Claus. Larger than a 25-story building, this ocean liner exists beyond scale. 4,000 passengers, 1,300 crew members, 1,600 cabins, four swimming pools, four restaurants, one casino, a theater, and even a bakery are on board. It's a floating city that never sleeps. Who takes care of this huge machine? How are things run? For one week, we watched behind the scenes during this Mediterranean cruise, with stops in Italy, Tunisia, and Spain. All aboard. Thank you very much. The wind is ruining my hair. After a three-hour train ride, Claude and Marie France are in Marseille and arrive at the boarding terminal. Yes. Like in an airport, security here is a top priority. Every passenger has to take an identity photograph so that officers can easily recognize them on the gangway. These are our four children. Florian and Vanessa have just arrived from Clermont-Ferrand to board the same ship with their two children, Ethan and Matisse. Where is the boat? Yeah, it's a big one. It's the second time that Florian and Vanessa, an electrician and bank worker respectively, are taking a cruise. You see, we're on the gangway. The first time was four years ago for their honeymoon. This is so great, a change from the usual day-to-day, -day, feet under the table, and just enjoy the week. Before enjoying the ride, Vanessa has to wait. At every stopover, passengers leave and board. This morning is Marseille, 300 climb on board. Once 
once on board this floating building, you then have to find your way. Where are we? We need to find the elevator. They don't have a map of the boat. Between the 20 walkways, they're easily lost. Be careful and follow us. There are a lot of people and I don't want to lose you. We should have gone the other way. Yet. We went around. Yet another hallway and still no cabin in sight. No? Oh. No, there's no way. Each suitcase is delivered by staff to the appropriate room. And thanks to their son's keen vision, after two hours of travel through mazes, hallways, and walkways, everyone is tired. But then, a bad surprise. We only have one bed. That's not in the program. Flo, we have one bed for four. That's not good. They said we would have a big bed and a bunk bed, Let right? Let me check. The couple thought they'd have a baby bed and a cot for their older son. Now it doesn't seem that way. The trucks are there? Okay, we're coming down. Before weighing anchor, Antonio has to make sure that all the necessary provisions are on board. Every Saturday before the ship takes off, it's a bally of fruits and vegetables on the docks. Now we're going to uh, check our uh, weekly provision loading. Food stores are stocked in the lower hold of this gigantic vessel. In marine life, this area is called the Lazaretto. For this special mission, Antonio is aided by an entire team. He has to verify the quality of all the foodstuffs, like these 26,000 eggs, for example. Now is uh, check the temperature of the hexes you're just loading. It should be uh, 41 below. Otherwise, if you're going to up, it's going to be dangerous for the uh, people to eat this one, you know. So we have to monitor this one all the time. It should be 41 below that. So the temperature we have now is 44. So it's okay. It's okay. The hygienic measures are drastic. Everything has to be disinfected. The least problem on the journey could cause an epidemic and turn very serious. Wood can be affected by parasite. So that kind of product that he's using, of course, is completely harmless, not dangerous for the food and for the men as well. Passenger security doesn't stop here. Everything that boards the ship has to be verified. And we are checking, of course, um, just in case something beside the food could be inside this, uh, this pallet. Maybe something dangerous for the security of the ship. That could be any kind of harmless thing, like uh, can be like explosive or can be other things. Milk, bananas, potatoes, lettuce. In the ship hold, the outsized pantry overflows with tons of foodstuffs. A whole part of the ship the passengers will never see. And here we have uh, cheese, sausages, milk. And on the other side, we have like a meat and uh, fish mainly, which has to be kept at uh, minus 25 degrees. 7,000 kilos of meat and the same amount of fish, enough to feed 5,000 boat passengers for a week in case of an incident in which they get stuck at sea. The Splendida has 18 floors called decks. On deck six, the main hall, Claude and Marie France take it all in. It's like Versailles. Look at the staircase, it's amazing. Yeah. The staircases are amazing, except their cabin is seven floors up. Uh, please sir, the elevators, where are they? Over there. 25 elevators link the 18 decks on the MSC Splendida. At first sight, that seems easily enough for all the ship's passengers, but at some hours, you'd do better to elbow your way through. Uh, going up? You're going up? This yeah. one is going down. We'll get it one day. Oh, okay, over here. I know, it's full. Too late. Come, let's get mad at them. It's going down? 
Let's go. You press 13? Yes. We have to cross all this. It's a maze. We shouldn't have gone this way. Lost in the ship's interminable corridors, Florian and Vanessa try to solve their bed issue. Matisse lags a bit behind. Florian, on the other hand, seems a bit testy. I just realized there's a problem with our room. There's only one bed and there are four of us. I just want to see if that's how it's supposed to be or if you have rooms with extra cots or anything. We can separate the beds, we can put... No, but there are beds missing. We have two kids. There's still some slight miscommunication. So? We can stick the beds together. But they're already together. You don't understand me. Let me explain. The two other beds are above. We lower them down. Nobody told us that. Okay? There are four beds. They're going to prepare them this evening, the beds for the kids. Okay. So you'll have four beds. Oh, we have to get them down. That's what I was telling you. We'll go this way this time. That way we don't have to go around. Back to the cabin to check that the bunk beds do exist. Okay. Bon alors. The beds are there. Les lits sont là. Cette fois-ci, c'est bon. Okay, we're fine now. The, the beds are there. Les lits sont là. Les lits sont là. On a même temps. There. Le quoi là? Les petits quoi là? The boat leaves the port of Marseille. Ah, mais ça y est. Gorgeous. Incredible. Exactly like the kids told us. Just incredible. Marie France and Claude take advantage of their cabin balcony, floating 30 meters in the air. It's so impressive to be this high and seeing the dry land. Weigh the anchors and find yourselves alone in the world. Lovers on a luxury cruise. After 50 years together, Claude and Marie France couldn't dream of anything better. 50 years of marriage. This is something. It's important to us. We made it. It's not easy to live together for 50 years. Not always easy. This is going to help us get along for another 50. <laughs> Claude, Marie France, and the 5,000 other passengers of the MSC Splendida are ready to spend their first night on board. Skimming along at over 20 knots, or about 40 kilometers an hour, the ocean liner prepares to reach Italy. Tomorrow morning, they'll be in Genoa. At 5 a.m., while the ship sleeps, the master baker, Geraldo, takes over for the night shift. Morning. How are you? Everything okay? The bakery runs 24 hours per day, and every morning they bake fresh pastries. Everything's homemade, nothing's frozen here. The ritual is well orchestrated. They prepare the dough, roll it, and shape it. The croissant is the star of morning breakfast on board. About half of the passengers have one. Croissant, uh, 100, uh, 1,800. Uh, Pain chocolate also 500, 600. This muffins around uh, 500. Vanessa and Florian are a bit wiped out by the first night on board. Their children didn't sleep a wink, so they seek out the mini club. It's the only place on this ship that we found for them. We're going to let them blow up some steam. Bad surprise, the mini club is deserted. For the moment, all the personnel are away on security drill. Now, there are not that many activities for them. I'm afraid this might be a long stay for them. We're going to find ways to distract them. Except bars and restaurants, 
there's really not much for them. Vanessa's enthusiasm has vanished. She's suddenly dreading what seems to be a rather annoying trip. She would have preferred something with more activities. True to their reputation, the French complain. At the pool, that could be a little complicated. Their first trip as a couple was their honeymoon. But at the time, they didn't have any kids. All right, you can sit there. With their two children along for the cruise, Florian and Vanessa risk not getting any time to relax. Hoping to take advantage of the trip, the little family will have to find its marks. We're going to go right up to the 6th, to the Yacht Club. And for some wealthier clients, life on board is a lot easier. Your card allows you to call the elevator so you don't have to wait. The other passengers can't do that. This elevator goes to the 18th floor, where there's the pool and the buffet. It's only for yacht club members. This VIP space is called the Yacht Club. The members benefit from certain privileges. This is the private pool, only for the members of the Yacht Club. It's the ideal place to take in the sun. Do you like it? Oh, great. It's very calm compared to the rest of the boat. There are so many people around the pool. It's so quiet here. Oh, you can swim without being bothered by the kids playing. It's very nice. You can sit on a lounge chair. Down below, it's not always possible to find a chair when it's sunny. Sada is a 38-year-old Madagascan. He started as a waiter, but these days, he has the special privilege of being able to access this highly protected area. Through hard work, Sada has become one of the most prized stewards at the private club. Here is the heart of the Yacht Club, with a 24-7 concierge service reserved for our clients. Now it's time to check on the rooms before the passengers arrive. As the ship steward for VIP passengers, you have to pay attention to the slightest details. That's where things really show. The minibar always has to be stocked, logos forward. Before arriving in the port, the commandant goes through maneuvers. Sometimes the boat vibrates, so that's why we check that everything's in order. I check this. And on the terrace, the same problem. I'm checking on the placement of the tables and chairs. Ah, there's water. I'll clean it up later. Seda has three minutes to make this puddle of water disappear. But for this symmetry fanatic, that's not all. I'm just going to check that the cushions are centered on the couch. You see, the seam has to be this way. That's the detail. Okay, I'll check the telephone, the hair dryer. Sada inspects everything, the telephone, the hair dryers, the champagne buckets, down to the fruits in the bowl. One thing is missing, always the same thing. One banana is missing, but that doesn't get by Sada. He makes a note of it, time is pressing on, but the Mr. Clean won't let that cause him to abandon his inspection. That's good. A few yards from the yacht club, Vanessa is waiting, a little hushed. To salvage something from her vacation, the young woman has decided to take matters into her own hands. This is a moment just for me. It's time for my massage. I have an appointment for a half-hour massage. So a little bit of relaxation. Je pense à Florian Olivier aux enfants. Hein.
You thinking about Florian and the kids? Trying to clear my mind. While Vanessa cuts herself off, her husband is somewhat occupied. Two kids, two strollers, and doors everywhere. Push the button. Come with daddy. Come on. Oh, darn, it's closed. A half hour massage later, Vanessa seems to be doing much better. You don't often see that kind of view out of your window. Crowded either. It's so big. You feel like you're alone. It's quite pleasant. There we go. The little family has fallen into the rhythm of the cruise. Back to the yacht club. So here is your suite. A Belgian couple is getting settled. They paid four times as much as the other passengers to travel in this VIP room. How do you like it? Nice colors. Beautiful view. A suite like this costs 2800 per week for a full-service, five-star experience. As any good steward, Seta anticipates his client's needs. I'd like to ask about your dinner. At what hour will you take it? You can come get us. Don't worry, that's what I'm here for. Would you like it here in your room? Yes. Okay. It's their seventh cruise. Thus, they're among the most privileged clients. I wish you a wonderful voyage. Cheers. Cheers to you. Thank you. At the end of the day, the trip leaves Genoa. Tomorrow morning, the passengers will wake up in Naples. Mario Stiff is the supreme authority on the ship. He's already been commander on the MSC Splendida for five years. This morning, he's allowed us the exceptional privilege of meeting him in his private quarters. Yes. This is where he takes refuge yeah, to deal ahead. with all the ongoing business on his ship. A radar screen informs him of the slightest danger in real time. As if they be good maneuvering, something, uh, some uh, dangerous object is coming. Uh, so if you make a good maneuvering, I watch always all the navigation. In case of emergency, Mario Stiffa can access the ship's most secretive area at any moment, the steering deck, located just a few yards from his quarters. This is the, the place where I, I take the command. I have the control over the ship. There's all the maneuvering, uh, everything, the engine control, everything. Uh, all the maneuvering of the ships. I when we arrived in Boston. When Mario Stifa isn't at the commands, his seconds take charge. To assure that they're at their post, he's devised an ingenious alarm system called the dead man's button. If in 10 minutes it don't, it, they don't push the button, this uh, alarm ringing, and if I am sleeping at night, because I sometimes have to sleep, here is uh, my room. Yeah. It's just behind it's this just wall the is uh, the bridge, this is uh, the corridor. So, I can go in pyjama, I can go with the night suite, I can go in straight on, on the bridge, I can take control if something wrong, yes. The pilot's deck is strictly limited to officers. We obtain special permission to film inside this restricted area. If pirates manage to get past security and access the strategic zone, the boat would fall under their control. This is the place where I am on duty. Well Thank you very much. Bye. The liner arrives in Naples, one of the most awaited stops for the passengers. They all head to Bora Bora, the self-service restaurant, to have lunch as quickly as possible and be among the first to go see the town. I think we're going to let the crowd go by. Unfortunately for Claude and Marie France, it's packed. I'm getting angry. 
This first trip to the buffet will surely be their last. Way, way, way too many people. I can't stand big crowds. At this moment, it's total madness. But what matters is that we get to go to Capri. Capri is Claude and Marie France's dream. At each stop, the passengers can visit the host port, either on their own or with a tour organized by the company. Sir, madam, I am Francesco, your guide for Capri. <laughs> a francophone guide, a little sign so they don't get lost, and the group number taped to the shirt. Everything is thought of to reassure the tourists. 100% Neapolitan. We're all good. Taken along, but not alone. A herd of sheep. We're used to summers in Auvergne. As the cows head out of the valley and into the mountains, I hope we won't have to walk so much. While the passengers take their visit, the members of the staff are busy inside the boat. Antonio, the manager, takes advantage of the time to inspect the cleaning ladies' work. Hello. Hello. Everything is fine? Yes. Yeah, very good. Gathered from the passenger cabins, these thousands of sheets and towels are transported to the boat's innards. There, they're piled into enormous washing machines. Once they're washed, it's magic. Other machines iron them and spit out folded sheets. The ship's laundry room works around the clock. The Isle of Capri, its fishing port, picturesque houses and postcard landscapes. It's a place they'd like to spend time. But for Claude and Marie France, their guide doesn't see it that way. The most important thing is the meeting back at the boat at 6.45 p.m. It's a quarter to four. Sorry. Hardly two hours to take in one of the jewels of the Mediterranean, even running wouldn't be enough. It's fabulous. We aren't disappointed. Gosh, it's beautiful. A few souvenir photographs, a stop by the store for postcards, and it's already time to go back to the port. They can't miss the boat. Ah, <gasps> it's so beautiful. Beautiful. We'll come back. The boat is just over there. Okay, thank you. Night has fallen. The ship continues its cruise between Naples and Messina in Sicily. Vanessa and Florian have deserted the cafeteria in favor of the ship's fancy restaurant. Chocolate? You want it's some good chocolate to get dressed up a bit. To eat in a bit of a fancy restaurant, it breaks up the daily rhythm. With our jobs, we don't always have the time to do things like this. But the night is far from over. This evening, the couple plans to enjoy themselves in one of the ship's nightclubs. But at first glance, Florian and Vanessa didn't choose the right bar. It's for older people. But the kids like it. For bed. The couple couldn't suspect that just a few feet away, another nightclub was burning the night away. The person leading the dance is this 21-year-old Italian, a boat employee. I like people to have a good time thanks to me. And while some are still having fun, others are just starting their day's work. It's one in the morning, 
The cleaning crew has taken over the ship's exterior decks. At the head is Marco Spanik. He has to clean the four pools and 12 jacuzzis. My section is uh, this uh, deck uh, here, uh, deck 14. This is my area. And how so much time to wash all the deck 14? All night. Not too hard? No, no, no. This is one uh, very good, very, for me, very nice job. I like this job. I like my job. Every night, 12 men work to scrub the busiest outside spaces from top to bottom. Keep, a shadow army joins the play. On board the ship, there's one crew member for every three passengers. From floor to ceiling, bay windows to floorboards, employees scrub, polish, and repair 24 hours per day, all amidst passengers who don't notice a thing. In the morning, we find Seta again. Apparently, there's an emergency. The concierge service. Ah, la concierge. Though we're in the middle of the Mediterranean, a passenger wants to read the newspaper. Oui, Monsieur Jacques, oui. Thanks to the internet, we can have newspapers here in the middle of the sea. We print newspapers for all the nationalities aboard. We have papers from the whole world. For the gentleman in 1515, we'll order Le Monde. It's a simple process. Once the order has been placed, Seita just has to go collect the paper from this floating printing press. Hi, I'd like the paper for 1515. On average, 200 papers are printed per day. It's free for the yacht club passengers. Others have to pay one euro. I just have to add the glue. It's about three to five minutes. Your paper. Even on a cruise, where time moves slowly, clients still have urgent needs. Messina in Sicily. It's a less beaten path than Naples. So Marie France tries to convince her husband to take a dip. But there's no room. Let's go for a dip. Grandpa is grumpy. He's not a fan of water. But I like it. Vanessa splashes around with her children. Our vacation while in the middle of the sea. It's great. What a setting. For Seda too, this stop means relaxation. Nine months out of the year, he lives far from his own. It's a difficult challenge. But when there's a moment of downtime, he reconnects with them. I'm very happy to see them today. In this room reserved for crew, he speaks with his family over the internet on average twice a week. From the middle of the sea, communication has to go through the ship's satellite. For me, it's about $75. His wife and two children live in Madagascar. His wife is eight months pregnant. In just a few clicks, his whole family appears. Ah, there we go. Ah, voila. Sali le so tata. Nena tsara la. Ah. Ai, hen tsara o. Ah. And ke le om ki bunen yo. Ah, ah ta ta ta. Tere, in tsangana ke le no le tere ka. Profil, profil. Ah, mandana luluka, mandana lulu ati fats manin. Kosi se mo. <laughs> it's my third baby. She's pregnant. <laughs> Seda's wife will give birth next month, but he won't be back in time to see his child's birth. 
It's very hard to work for nine months away from my family, but work is work. I love you, dear. Kisses. Gone from Messina, the Splendida now heads towards Tunis. It's a particular crossing. This evening is the commander's ball. For the first time on the cruise, the passengers will have the chance to meet him. Some are going to be dressed to the nines. I've never seen a hair salon with a sea view. How wonderful. Everything to look nice and proper for my host. Claude won't recognize me. He's going to say, Wife? Can I come in? They're so pretty, darling. It's a little puffy. And with the makeup and all that, I guess. Okay, now it's my turn. I hope we will. We're all dressed up like clowns. She loves it. She lives for this. Eight decks below is the boat's grand hall. Antonio doesn't have a second to lose. This evening, passengers are going to get a good look at him. It all plays out in the kitchen. Chef, what do you have first? Hello, first it is a... Before sending the dishes out, Antonio makes a point of tasting it. And, uh, okay, thank you. your verdict, Antonio? Very good. Very good, it's perfect. The presentation is very well done. And the taste is, uh, I would say, fantastic. And everywhere you're gonna find like the same kind of uh, dish, the same kind of presentation with the same quantity of food. Good. At 6.30, it's the starting gun. One by one, okay, come on. The 40 waiters are all in line, on standby. They have to get 2,000 appetizers out in barely 15 minutes. The line chef brings the dishes out into the room. The maitre d' carries them to the clients. Long way. While the passengers finish their dinner, Mario Stifa is in his room 13 floors above, changing his attire. For him too, this evening's event is very important. It is one of the most uh, exciting nights for the passengers, you know, that uh, they, they expect because the captain still is, uh, you know, there is a lot of story around the captains and so they expect something special. Going down. Oh, what is it? Suffering. Suffering. Hello, Captain. How are you? You're very good, thank All you, right. sir. Nice to meet you. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. How uh, is everything okay? It's a very good. Very thank nice. you very much. It's a pleasure. Enjoy. 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 Yes. Very, very nice. nice. Very nice. Very nice. Like a Hollywood star, Commander Stifa makes his entrance. Oh, hold on. 
the song. All these people are waiting for me. Yes, 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 yes. yes. They're all, all waiting to snap a souvenir photo. Hello, good evening. Good evening to you. The commander appears to savor this moment of celebrity. The official photographer doesn't miss a beat. His souvenir photos cost 19.90 euros. It's a flourishing business for the company. After a 20 minute wait, it's finally Claude and Marie France's turn. But despite his stripes and his charisma, the commander doesn't seem to have totally impressed the retiree. Stop it, Mary France. I prefer my husband's mustache to the commander's. The evening continues in the theater. It's a 1,600-seat performance hall equivalent to the Olympia in Paris. Backstage, the dancers finished their makeup. They are members of an English troupe and boarded the ship a few days ago. They already seem well adjusted to life on board. Is it difficult to, to dance with a boat moving like this? Sometimes, yes, but you get used to it. So it's okay. When it's really bad, yes, it's difficult. Sometimes you jump and crash against the floor. Other times it's okay. Like now, it's okay. What really surprises me are the lights. They're wonderful. The shows on the ship don't have any cause to envy traditional theaters. Each evening, two performances are held in order to accommodate the ship's 5,000 passengers. Does your foot hurt? I need to soak them. One week after leaving Marseille, the giant of the sea glides back into port. It's the end of the vacation. You're riding in the stroller. We are. For Vanessa, Florian, Ethan, and Mathis, the time has come to leave the boat. But before regaining solid land, they have to stop by reception to complete the last formalities. It's the extras for the drinks, everyday services, and the massage. It's a 500 euro extra. All in all, the couple paid 1,700 euros for four persons for full room and board. It's cheap due to the fact that Flora and Vanessa booked last minute on the internet. But despite the minor troubles at first, they'll surely be back aboard someday. We'll come back. We'll do it again when the kids grow up a little bit. The gloomy weather in Marseille can't spoil Marie France and Claude's good spirits. The trip was meant to celebrate their golden anniversary, perhaps awaiting their diamond anniversary. No, he didn't win. C'est vrai. Mais bon. We'll come back. But when? We'll see. It's time to raise the anchor. All new passengers, but Sati, Antonio, and the others remain. The MSC Splendida is already back on its journey through the Mediterranean.